I very seldom plan my life. And I'm not even joking. At first we thought we were just going to look for herbs, right? What we found was, was of course, something more important. I didn't plan to be an actor, you know, I, that was not one of my ambitions. I didn't even plan to be a musician. I mean, if you told me 10 years ago I'll have a farm, I'll laugh at you. I think you're drunk. So how different is this from all the farms you were you were in in your internship in Taiwan and all that? It's very different because the farm that I interned in it wasn't a farm but they conserve plants like for horticulture purpose and conservation purpose. But over here is organic farm where people can eat like premium organic good quality crops. <laughs> Yeah, advertising for me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and you get good sunlight and, and rain and wind. It's a deluxe to be able to eat what you have here. Yeah. Well, it's not just about the food, really. It's also about community. Like, that's the most yeah. important thing, isn't it? So, and to us, the meal is not just good food. It's good company, it's good environment. So at the, so the farm, we kind of concentrate on that, make sure we get that right. And then we have happy farm hands, you'll have happy food as well. <laughs> happy crops. Yeah, well, there's, there's really no point being good to vegetables and being terrible to people. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, we're quite lucky, isn't it? We've got this very beautiful environment. Yeah. How many years have you, like, have you make this into what it is today? Seven years now, seven years. Ah. The first two years were just learning how to farm. Mm -hmm. so, because of course we're not farmers originally. So, yeah. so a lot of learning. And then once we sort of knew how to farm, we yeah. put a restaurant on it. Mm. Do you like it here? Yeah. <laughs> Just for glance and I know I fall in love with this kind of place. Yeah? Yeah. So you wanna walk here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the thing about Pete is that he's one of very few in the country that really care about the produce they are growing. And with that care comes a duty to approach the growth of vegetables intelligently. If you're talking about culture, food is probably the most important of the lot, actually, because we all eat. And currently, we have a generation of young chefs who are asking the same question, and Darren is one of them. Darren is an expert in local ingredients. And he's not just talking about it. He built a restaurant based on that philosophy, which of course is very hard. That's that saying, right? You are what you eat. We've stuck with using produce from the country um, and we've tried our best to be as imaginative as possible with the cooking.
Why did you decide you want to be a chef? <laughs> not quite a, not quite a first choice. I wanted to do fashion design. No uh, yeah, that was like one of the first things. I wanted to do fashion design. I wanted to do fine arts. But there was this, there was there was something quite mesmerizing about cooking in a kitchen, a professional kitchen. That I've always been in the kitchen. What since you were? Cooking? Yeah, yeah. Like when, like, like I, you know, you learn uh, like how to count in the kitchen. Grandmother's uh, pounding some. Yeah. It's kind of cool. I like small towns like this. When is the last time you back in Tao? Oh, fuck, man. Um, do you still have family there? Yeah, I do. I do. I get pissed off when I go back there, though. Because oh, it's yeah. like the, the shit they've done to it. Oh, it's like rubbish, huh? Well, it's like they call it development, lah. but I mean, the Tao I grew up in is like this. This style of play. <laughs> yeah, which I like. Um, yeah, before the West Malaysians came out. I came from a Chinese-speaking family. I went to an English school. I was brought up in the UK. I came back to Malaysia. First time I was in Malaysia for any length of time was in Kuala Lumpur. I didn't intend to come back. I came back to visit my friends and I stayed for 30 years. Um, I work in English a lot, but I am of Chinese descent. I read Chinese literature all my life. I've never been to China until I was in my 30s. In that mix is identity crisis. Where do you come from? Who are you? Yeah? And that has driven my work. I mean, you know, you, it's, it's driven my music, it's driven my films. Uh, do we own this land? Why don't we feel like we own this land? Should we feel ownership for this land? Why, you know, why aren't people feeling more ownership of this place that we grew up in? <laughs> this dish is the, is the national food of Malaysia. <laughs> yeah, it is. It has replaced the nasi lemak. It's the national food of Malaysia, KFC. <laughs> Right. When you talk about colonialism, this is this is Colonel Sanders colonizing Malaysia. I got so sick of, of people asking me what was the national food of KFC. Yeah. Wanna head up this street and then make a left turn or? Yeah. But you know you look at this and it's like <sighs> kinda of this this is where we belong, you know. Yeah, yeah. Right? There's a romanticism in my generation when we grow up. We, we, you know, because China is communist, we can't go back to China. Yeah. We can't go to China. And the, the first time I went to China, you almost want to kiss the, the, the floor, you know. I mean, yeah. once you get off the plane, but and then pretty soon you, you're gonna have dinner and the mainland Chinese will start calling you a foreigner. <laughs> yeah. And that's always a revelation to me. Yeah. And that's the sort of moment you sort of understand that. Actually, yeah, we're Malaysians. I'm Malaysian, and uh, and this is this is where we belong. Yeah, yeah, this is where we belong. And because of who my parents are, right? I, I've never had that inclination of whether India would be motherland or China would be motherland. So you, for a lot of my childhood, you're just kind of in the middle of nowhere. You always feel like everybody else has got like China or got like India, and then you do, you don't. Yeah, right. And out of necessity, Malaysia became my home. In that sense, does that make sense to you? I mean, yeah, it does. But it's complicated though because we, we're so open, and we and then you have the British colonial influence, yeah. which is another layer of displacement. Yeah. yeah. I think the sense of displacement is what's in common. I think especially for you and me, actually, I think that's what it's really in common. Yeah.
Because when you're growing up, I was displaced. You know, I was in Sabah, then Singapore, then the UK, then I worked Hong Kong, I worked a lot in Japan, then I came back here and so on. So that issue of who you are never really got resolved until I was a grown up, really. And then you also live here for a while the first time because, of course, I'm from Borneo. I'm not from West Malaysia. So, proudly Borneo, okay? <laughs> I don't understand Malaya. I mean, I can remember feeling the racial tension here when I land. I mean, you can almost cut it with a knife. The racial tension was so thick here compared to, say, Sabah or Sarawak. Uh, but somewhere along the line, you fall in love with the people because, of course, you start working with the people, and Malaysian people are fantastic, I think. No, I, I truly mean it. And, uh, and you only learn that because you've worked all over the world. You know, Malaysian people are warm, they're honest, by and large honest. <laughs> Hi, nama saya Darren. Eh? Uh, kita orang dah sampai dekat uh, tu Pak Yah, Bistro Pak Yah. So, kita tunggu. Ah, okay. Is that again? Yeah. Uh, it's very melodic. Right? Maybe maybe not at 5 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. No. Yeah. Can <laughs> kita turun kamu eh? Dekat mana? So ikut sini ya. It's all become oil pump. Where do they retreat to then? It's all on Asli because it's, their home is all gone. So some of the stories I hear are that they try the city out. And they don't like it. Then they don't like Fuck it. Fucks them right up. Then they come back and then they, you know, they, they try and assimilate back into their village life. But cannot. Yeah, it's a bit difficult for them to do that. Well, the village is gone anyway, right? Where is the uh, village? They will, sometimes they put two villages might move in to with each other. Right. So the villages are not a problem. It's the, what they call, Tana Adat, uh -huh. which is their ancestral land. Ancestral that's land. That's the one that's being robbed. So ancestral land would include places for hunting, places right. for where they get their food source, but also places where they are um, their ancestors worshipped or where right. that that place is meant for healing or right. and that's the that's the part that's being encroached. Part nama saya Darren ni Pete uh, part dengan cerita sini boleh cari uh, apa tu kita nak cari buah limau hantu duduk sini dulu uh, ini untuk jamuan siapa yang datang oh, nak masih oh, 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 oh. cantik hmm. masih ini uh, semalam kita menyambut tahun baru oh ya yeah. nah, yeah. tahun baru hari ini kira last lah jam jamuan siapa datang sudi nak minum minum uh. Okay. Okay, terlebih dahulu saya hendak uh, cik sign dulu lah sini. Oh, kan? oh, sign ha, ha. <laughs> Sebab saya ada buku lawatan tau. Oh. Hmm. Berapa hmm. tahun sini? Ya. Dah berapa tahun lah. Perang dunia kedua pun sini. Oh. Perang Batak pun sini. Push. Hmm. Perang Rawa pun sini. <laughs> tak ke mana.
Sini ada harimau? Oh, ada? Ada. ada harimau ke? Ada. Eh? Ya, <laughs> Kak. <laughs> What is it? Harimau ada sini. Minta maaf, Yun pun yang salah. Cina cuit lagi lagi mung tempat Yun de. Mengharap mung Yun kau sengi dan juga mung Yun kare, mung Yun mermor sebab ada En Mai Jawi, Yu Pekan bekerja sama Ruji Cina cuit. Yun ok lah abor ji, Yun ok lah selamat. Jangan Yun neng kiri kanan, mohon lah Yun terima kasih mung yang. Okay. Boleh kita bergeraklah. Beautiful light. Right? Ya. Yeah. Kalau macam kita nampak air nak minum pun ini pun boleh hmm, buat mangkuk apa. For the past six years, you have no idea what I put in my mouth. Like, I, it was from the ground, I'll eat it. You know, people put it, they say, hey, try this. I don't even think twice. I just, you know, put it in my mouth. Okay, so there are two parts to it. The first is, is this unexplored world. And for me, that's super exciting. Like, there's this, there's this sense of mystery and ex adventure just within walking in our jungles. Oh, it's a dog, Asam. Asam. Yeah, asam lah, yeah. They're quite fragrant, quite refreshing. Looks like small peaches, isn't it? It's got a little bit bite, mm. very crispy. Then the second part of it is the ingredients. It's beautiful, no? Just have like branches of it on a plate and then just send it out. Because there is this sense of ownership over where we are. Nama ni apa? Penunduk, penunduk, penunduk. I wrote it. Lemak juga. Yeah. Okay. It's got this like... Um, Quite delicious, actually. Yeah. Hmm. So, kolam ini kenapa tak ada air sudah? Dia sudah banyak daun kan? Daun jatuh. Ha. Hmm. So boleh mandi. Dia tak bagi mandi tu. Dia ambil air ini. Dia ambil bagi air, mandi, mandi atas sana. Oh, tak boleh masuk. Ha, oh, dia tak boleh. Oh, tak boleh masuk. Ambil air keluar. Ha, ambil eh? siram dekat luar. Ha, siram dekat luar. Dia... Kalau orang sakit lah. Ha, orang sakit sana dia letak. Uh, yang baru ni penyakit yang baru ni pun kita bawa pakai juga. Ha, pakai juga. Sakit macam sesema ke apa ke kita ambil lah. Kita ambil sini. Ha, ambil bawa ke rumah lah. Macam ke kimu ke. ke. Hmm. Masih Sekarang pakai. masih dipakai. Masih pakai juga. Kalau ada orang mimpi oh kau orang kena sakit ni kena ambil air tu, bukit tu. Hmm. Macam tu baru kita ambil. Tak boleh ambil ha, sembarang. Ah kalau saja-saja kita ambil tak mujarab. Dia dulu sampai sini tu. Dulu dalam sampai hat ni lah. I feel sad because when we went to see their healing pond, the pond where they bring their sick, I was expecting a pond. It's a puddle. It's gone. The landscape is gone. Then in a few more years, there'll be no more. And even the water. I mean, we're surrounded by plantations. So plantations, of course, they spray herbicide. So the water will be dirty. They wash their face with it. I can remember going to wash my face with it. I said, well, if you do it, I'm going to do it. From a holy water that's supposed to clean you, it's now full of pesticides. Pak Pusa told me, I was riding on a bike with him, and he got to this place where they were cutting the hills for durians. And he stopped and he said, you know, if, if you cut down the hills, you cut down the forest, where are the animals going to live? I said, don't have to finish this tree. I'm going to see where I'm going. I'm going to see where I'm going. Right? All of them. 
true, bro. Right? Try to. So the first thing he thought about wasn't himself or his people or his home and children. The first thing he thought about was the animals. That's culture. That's your worldview. They look at the world of animals as equal to human beings. So yeah, so it's, it's overall a very, very sad experience for me. I mean, for me, it wasn't about the herbs that he was showing us, which of course was fantastic. For me, it's a community disappearing and, and losing its identity. And you feel helpless, I think that's why. You can't, you don't feel as you can do much. So I'm glad I went, because of course that's, that's, that's educational. There's a desire for, for across the board throughout the whole organization to be educated about the ingredients. Hey, okay, so I just wanted to share some of the stuff that uh, I got. So there's some pretty interesting things I've never seen before. We'll, you can take a couple and just like try it. It's actually changed the flavor, like it's more acidic now. This is, this is a miracle berry. We found this. Someone introduced it to us uh, in Penang, huh? the Green Acres one. No, you, you see the flower for the lumber. That one, what you're eating, was a flower. Just being educated about the ingredients also ties us in with the prosperity of the land and the people. And we feel that by nourishing ourselves with what's important in this country, with regards to ingredients and the things that we put in our mouths, we feel like that will then transfer to the people that come and eat here as well. Making a beautiful farm it's extremely creative. I mean, it takes a lot of creative energy. I don't think people are too, too obsessed with tools. Art is not made by a tool, art is made here. Right? So it could be in the form of a book, it could be in the form of a record, it could be in the form of a film, it, it could be in the form of a farm. It, it really it doesn't matter to me what tools you use, whether I'm using a guitar, whether I'm using a, a camera, whether I'm using a chanko. Who cares? I don't, I don't care. It, it, it's just tools. 
You try and make beautiful things out of it. You try and make meaningful, honest things out of it. The rest is the boxes people want to put you in. They want to say Pete Teo the musician or Pete Teo the actor or Pete Teo the this or that or the farmer. But there's no meaning to that. I mean, those are just tools you use, you know. I'm not young anymore, so I'm not. I'm not impressed by fame. What is impressive would be somebody who's putting out good, honest work and using the talent to do something good. Um, and I suppose I'll try my best to to continue to do that.